Let's talk about our top three favorite video game franchises mm -hmm. of all time. Now, I'm going to let you go first. What's your number one? My number one, it definitely has to be Resident Evil. I'm, wow, uh, okay. Yeah. Favorite one? Ooh. I'm a big fan of two, mm -hmm. and I'm a big fan of four. Okay, fair enough. The two best ones, arguably. So yeah. I, I love it. Four, four is personally mine. I really like two. I didn't, I've never gotten the hype for it like i understand how cool mm. it is but like maybe it's just because i'm a scaredy cat i think and that was, game is uh, terrifying when i first had my experience with it i was little mm -hmm. i was watching my brother play um. and they have like a whole usually old games when they do cutscenes, it's very like rare and it's like in engine it's like whatever right but they showed off the the liquor in Resident mm. Evil 2, and that was my first yeah, time Yeah, the liquor's it. cool. And I when Leon like, runs into it, right? Yeah, yeah, when Leon runs into it, and it's like on the ceiling, mm -hmm. and you see it slithering around. I'm like, dude, it scared me, but it like in a good way, and I, I, I just I fell in love with it. I love that. Uh, second favorite franchise, then? Ooh, I would have to be... I'm stuck between... I guess I would have to go with Bioshock. Bioshock, okay. Yeah. Okay, favorite. Are you going to say two is your favorite one because the online? Yeah. Okay, well, so. Well, no, not the online, just like the story okay, in so general. Okay, so preface this. Oh, never mind. I mean, there's no preface this. You, you just think Bioshock 2 is the best one. Yeah. I think you're insane. Really? Like, I, I think you're fucking insane. Like, I like two. I've never had the urge to go back and play it. Oh, it's. I thought it was so easy. It, it's fun. I really mm. liked it, but Bioshock 1 and Bioshock Infinite are like. For me, just like that all around experience and rapture, and uh, what was the city in the oh, sky? Uh, I don't know. I forgot. Yeah, something Sky City. I don't fucking yeah. know. <laughs> but but that experience like changed my life. Um, two was cool because he could play as a big daddy the whole game. Yeah, I, I think I loved two because it was uh, you got to see and have like that really protective narrative of being mm -hmm. a big daddy. And you get to be the things I like protect and make the world, the small world of Rapture go around. That's mm -hmm. what makes it. I tight. also like that they added the big sisters, how they were called. Yeah, the big the sisters. The big sister was cool. And the online, I mean, that was very underrated. Like, I know you were hooked on it, but I was too. Like, it ran very well. It was mm -hmm. awesome. I would love for some sort of revitalization of that to yeah, come Yeah, I think it would definitely be fun to play it again. Yeah. And especially with like the 360 servers being back up and all that. I'm just curious on like what, because the, there's rumors on like, oh, they're making a new Bioshock game. They're making a new Bioshock game. You know, what is it? it it's rumored not to be Rapture. It's rumored to be like in Alaska or some shit like that. So I'm very curious. I'm also very mm -hmm. nervous. Maybe Judas. Ken Levine's new game coming out this year is also going to be oh, yeah. that Bioshock game we all want. Yeah. Um, very excited. Third favorite franchise now. It would be Halo. It okay. And Halo. favorite one, Reach? Uh, it's definitely a tie between Reach and ODST. Okay. I think just Reach was like the pinnacle of what Halo is meant to be. Mm -hmm. And you finally get to experience like the the big narrative point of yeah. like the fall of reach, yeah. like the losing all the Spartans, how it affected humankind and all that. And it was just like, that was like the peak. Yeah, man. I mean, Halo is incredible. I, I really like Halo. I I've loved mm, half of them. Uh, two. I love two is the first one I ever played. And that's like my nostalgic bit for it. Halo ODST, Halo 3, awesome. Reach, I mean, nostalgia with you, playing mm. with you on um, Forge and all that stuff. And um, 4, it's grown on me a little bit. I don't hate 4. It's, yeah, I it's not bad. I despise 5, though. I yeah. fucking hated 5. And I really liked Infinite. I thought Infinite's story was great. I thought the online was pretty well done. I just didn't like the uh, how you progress. Like, it took too long. I know they mm -hmm. fixed it a lot. You can go back and play it now. It's a little bit better, but... It just, you lose that progression. Like everyone was trying to go to that battle pass and Microsoft was trying every little thing. They tried gears and they fucked gears at first and then they fixed it. And yeah. then Halo Infinite's kind of the same thing. Like it was very weak at the front and then now it's good. Mm. Don't do that at first. Do the good part first. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like uh, a lot of these AAA companies struggle with live service models mm -hmm. for their games. And, like what and they're not ready for support. I think that's like yeah. a big thing. 
Yeah, it's um, not ready for support. I think it's almost like too much on their plate. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're still in this age of like having these yearly releases, right? Call of Duty is a big one for that. I feel Mm -hmm. like a lot of life service games that are successful in these days and ages are ones that aren't being renewed every year. They're being kept up. Yeah. So would you say that these three franchises for you are like the reason that you love games are because yeah. of these three. I'm surprised you didn't say Fallout, personally. Uh, was it, it close, is, like, number four? I think, like, especially after last week's episode, I wanted to throw in something else in there. And Fair enough. Share, like, all, a much more yeah, variety. Yeah. Now, it's interesting, because I was trying to figure out my franchises. I had two, like, locked, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Now, some people might be surprised if they followed me for a while, that, like, I'm just going to get it out that The Last of Us is not one of my favorite franchises. Ooh. But I say that because there's only two games. Yeah. When a third one is eventually <laughs> released, because yeah. we all know it's going to happen, and it's great, then I'll feel a little bit better. I, I feel like it's hard to say, oh, yeah, like, the, two games is a fran- – technically it is, but, like, for me, I need more than at least three. I need three or more, personally. So, my number one favorite franchise of all time is, is uh, Gears of War. Gears of War, like, for me, like, no matter what the game is, I think it's also one of the most consistent franchises – I think they've only made one okay game, and it wasn't even from the original developers. It was a uh, Gears of War Judgment Day. <coughs> the people can fly. That's the one that I did not think was great. I've never gone back and played it. I never played Judgment Day. It was very boring. Yeah. It, it's okay. <laughs> it has cool ideas, but I didn't fully love that one. Second, uh, I, again, some people will argue, oh, well, the new games aren't that great. They're still good. They still run great. They're graphically some of the best stuff that the Xbox has done. And while the characters maybe aren't the best, I thought Gears of War 5 was excellent. I was very surprised by Mm -hmm. the story choices that they did. And making Kate Diaz, the main character, the best choice they could have done for that new trilogy. Yeah, I was going to say, I I played through 5. 5 felt pretty good, especially just being... 4 was like a nice, we're back. Yeah. But it wasn't like the same gravitas as like the first Gears of War where you play it. And it's so, <laughs> mm. wow. Adding on to that, um, so Gears of War is my number one favorite franchise of all yeah. time. I have two Lancers at home. Like, I'm so addicted to it. I, I saw some guy on Facebook Marketplace had the original GameStop standees that they had when Ooh. the games were coming out. I almost bought them. I had no idea where I'd put them, though. I was like, oh, maybe I could bring them to like the podcast set. But like, yeah, as you can see, you can't really see Storm anything yet if you're watching the video. Standing you... over like this. Uh, it Storm was like him, him, Dom, and Carmine. And it was like Years of War in them standing up for oh, the first okay. game. Yeah. All right. Second favorite gaming franchise, Mass Effect. Um, four games in. A fifth one is announced. Andromeda is not great. Um, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I've played it through twice. The first time I did not beat it, I was just bored. The second time was years later after the Legendary Edition came out. I was like, all right, I got I got to try Andromeda. Yeah. The combat, best of the franchise. The story, the weakest of the franchise, hands yeah. down. Um, a lot of the choices just, it feels like they were trying to do so much in the first game where it's like what they really should have done, and I know they were trying to build up a new trilogy, yeah. was start smaller like the first Mass Effect was and grow from there. I just, it never grabbed onto me. I thought the characters were really lackluster. And I think they, I know they were trying to go away from the trilogy because, you know, when you beat the third game, I don't, did you ever beat it? Do you really? I was about to say, um, I just last night bought the uh, legendary Legendary. edition. It was like $5. I never touched a Mass Effect game. Okay. So I'll tell you in a second. Remind me in a little bit to talk about it just in a second. Okay. Once I get all my franchises out, but the first game when I played it, I thought it was okay. I didn't mm. love it. And still to this day, I think it's just okay. Like the story, the character choices, awesome. Combat's awful. The vehicle, awful. The Legendary Edition fixed some of it, but yeah, still doesn't cut it. Th- that was the one that I could tell, yeah, you, you phoned that one in for the remaster. Like yeah. they definitely should have taken the combat from two and three and moved it forward. They didn't, that's okay, it's whatever. But that was the first time I had actually gone through and beaten it. Up to that point, I'd never beaten it. I oh, just wow. never cared. I just went straight to two all the time. I went to straight to two every single time. I would just replay it three times. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. But <laughs> then I got two. I remember when the second one came out, 
I didn't buy it first day. I was like, oh, it looks cool. But then there was all these reviews. It's like 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. And I went and bought the game like for $15 at GameStop. And I fucking loved it. I loved Mass Effect 2. And I loved it so much because it was the first game that made me feel, wow, my choices are vital. And I say that because uh, I killed off every single character in my first playthrough. <laughs> Uh, very, very badly uh, to the point where I was really, 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 really sad. Um, and I instantly loaded my save, went through it again because I had to save everyone. Killed mm -hmm. it, uh, lost five people the next playthrough. My third playthrough, I finally did it. Yeah. <laughs> then Mass Effect 3 came out, bought it first day, beat it in a week. And I was one of the few that was like, not that disappointed by the ending. The ending's very... There's like four different endings mm -hmm. and I'm not going to get into spoilers because you just bought them and I don't want to spoil that because I think it'd be a cool segment to talk about your experience with Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. But it's open ended like two of them are pretty open ended and I really hope the next one continues like they choose an ending. They're like that is the definitive ending. Yeah, because there's a couple that's like, oh, yeah, that's cool to do. That's cool to do. But there's two that are very definitive to me. And I hope that's where five takes place is that it's the next trilogy for this and these characters. Gotcha. Adding in there though, my third favorite franchise of all time. This was tough. Um, cause I could have easily done Pokemon. I could have easily done Halo. Um, but in the end of the day, I went kingdom hearts. Oh, I wow. have, it was between kingdom hearts and fallout for me, but is what kingdom hearts has done while I do not love every game. I actually really dislike 15 of those games now right i think there's nine, nine. i think there's nine and three <laughs> main ones and okay. then they're making a fourth one right now which is rumored to be coming out next year i hope that's true really yeah um but i've loved kingdom hearts my entire life the first game i remember i played the second one first fell in love with it had to go back and play them all and it was kind of like my introduction to not just kingdom hearts but also final fantasy mm -hmm. i love the characters that show up in there and it really opened my eyes to how much I love Square Enix now. So without Kingdom Hearts, I wouldn't like, uh, probably would have never gotten into Square Enix and Final Fantasy games. So okay. it's a big part. Before we move forward though, you got the Legendary Edition, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. I am so excited to hear your playthrough. It's very tough. <laughs> yeah. Um, to keep everyone alive. Um, it's gonna, easier once you play them back to back. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I tried, I th I forgot which one I tried. I rented a copy. It might have been a Mass Effect 2. Probably was. Um, I didn't like the way how the combat was at the start. I think it was like you pick a class and you're stuck with that one nope, weapon that's type. One. That was one. Yeah, I was stuck with like a shotgun for like the entirety yeah. of the game. And I was like, wow, That's this definitely, sucks. yeah, you played <laughs> one. Two, nah, you can use any weapon, any class. It's very open. Then three opens That's it good. up even more. So Yeah, I heard in Legendary Edition, they kind of ditched that system in the first one. Mm -hmm. So I That was the whatever. one thing. That was the one thing they definitely changed a lot of. But one's cool. Just if, if you want help, I have a whole guide that I follow uh -huh. every time I play it to just make sure that I can at Dude, least keep everyone alive. Is it one of those old, like, book No, guides? no, no, no. It's oh, just on okay. Google. I just, go, it's like a, a link I go to, and it literally tells you, when you get to this mission, make sure to do this, mm -hmm. this, and this. Because it's, I mean, it's always cool. I've played the game so many times, though, at this yeah. point, that, like, for you, go in with an open experience. But if you want to go back through and play it and keep everyone alive, just let me know.